We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. The, the customers here are a very powerful group because we are talking about Generation Z. And the other study was combining generation insights from Generation Z and, and millennials. So before we kick off, I would like to, sorry. Okay. Uh, before we kick off, I would like us all to be on the same page. So I would like to briefly introduce the main concept uh, I will be uh, discussing during this presentation. So who are our uh, members of our research group? Uh, Generation Z is uh, defined as a cohort of, of individuals born from the mid 1990s to early 1910s. Uh, and they are uh, defined as digital natives because this, this is the first generation born into the world where uh, internet is widespread. Appro there are now approximately 2.5 billion people worldwide. Of course, they are not the most powerful customer consumer group right now because most of them are under legal age, but they will be in 10 years or so. The other group, uh, millennials, is a cohort of individuals born from the early 1980s to mid 1990s, uh, and is approximately 1.8 billion people world, wo worldwide, including myself. And we are now the most powerful co consumer group in the world. So the studies uh, try to search the relations between the, those groups of people and brands, uh, counterfeit products and brand restrictions. So it's important to note what are the brands and uh, how, uh, how we use this term in, in the studies. So uh, brand, uh, brand is not a legal term, it is a business term. It is an, an identifying symbol, mark, logo, name, word, or sentence that companies use to distinguish their products from others. But in this study, we use it as an umbrella term for all efforts the company takes to promote itself, to promote, uh, to, to, to promote its products. So if you are talking about the most powerful or the most uh, uh, valuable brand in the world, which is Apple, we are talking about, about the, brand, the Apple brand as such, not particular intellectual properties that comprises this, uh, this brand. So, and the intellectual property here is our trademark, which are of more narrow, narrow scope. And uh, while Apple has one brand, it has also multiple tens, thousands of, of trademarks, which uh, are protected all over the world. Counterfeit products. Counter counterfeit products are goods uh, which are fake products and which imitate the, uh, which imitate the uh, brand owner's original, original products and are, sold, and are sold not by the brand owners. Whereas brand restrictions, uh, uh, these are uh, the brand restrictions are all restrictions on the brand use, including plain and standardized packaging, bans on the use of brands and branding elements, uh, which are introduced all over the world. And it's the, the, the easiest way to think about them is uh, when you think about tobacco products, which uh, more which are uh, standard which have standardized packaging all over the world. So. Let's kick, let's go to the studies, uh, to the first study. Okay. So ab about the methodology. Uh, so uh, the study was online. It was for, uh, it, it was regarding uh, the counterfeit products. Uh, uh, we surveyed 4,500 respondents in 10 countries all over the world. And uh, we wanted to know how they make their choices regarding the uh, 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 regarding what to buy, and also how they see their uh, uh, how they see uh, counterfeit products as a problem worldwide. We did not search all industries. We searched only those industries who are most prone to the to the uh, trademark or brand infringements. And in our view, these eight uh, groups of projects were the most important. 
Okay, so what are the insights? So first of all, we wanted to know what are the values, the uh, uh, the generation, the generations that has, and uh, those were those values we found out were individuality, morality, and flexibility. And uh, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, flexibility, and these were the values that uh, gener uh, Gen Zers uh, uh, referred to most when they were talking about how they make choices about the pr uh, purchasing goods and, uh, and uh, their life choices as well. So 92% uh, of them say that uh, it is important to be always true who they are. 75% would rather stand out than fit with the others. As regards morality, uh, uh, the vast majority states that they determine their own moral code. But what is important to, to note is that this code, uh, these codes, moral codes, are guided by values they learned from the family. 76% uh, think that uh, uh, they think about ethical issues while shopping. And on the other hand, there is flexibility issue because uh, uh, although it is important to know who they are for genders. They also know that they change and they will change in the future. So uh, they know, uh, so we don't know where the path uh, would lead them. Okay, so and uh, so, so how do they react to the brands? Are brands important to them? 62% uh, say that brands are very important or important to uh, to them, and there are varying there are differences between be, between particular countries we looked at. Uh, brand names are more important for people in India and China and Indonesia, while less important to people in the U.S., Japan, Italy, and Russia. And uh, 81% feel that the brand name isn't as important as how the product fits their needs, which is very interesting insight if we look at the other slide. Because uh, uh, most of the uh, genders, they think that the brands, they use brands as an extension of their individual identity. 80% 80, 80 say it's more important for uh, a brand to fit their style than what the brand means to others. While 76% six, think that they use popular brands in their own unique way. So they use brands to enhance their individuality rather than to fit within social norms. Also interesting aspect is what Gen Zers expect from brands because it's not only to look good, for example, but also to that the brand do more, the brands do more than, uh, uh, than that. They want the brands to reinforce their own moral values and, uh, and ethics. 86% um, think that brands should be accessible to all, which can be understood in two different ways. First of all, maybe it, uh, the, 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 the most common meaning is that the brand may be more affordable, so to say. But also, it can mean that the brands should be inclusive and be open to all uh, people around the world. And 85% believe that brands should aim to do good to the world. Genzers, uh, apologies, Genzers uh, value intellectual creations, value intellectual property. 93% have a lot of respect for people, ideas, and creations, while 74% think it's important to buy genuine products. But when it comes to reality, they also notice that fake products are sold everywhere. And 53% uh, of them saw that products on online marketplaces. So we can say that counterfeit products are widespread. So what happens when we have this clash between values? So when you have the strong morals of people who say that they should, uh, that they do, that they adhere to who they are, that they have strong moral codes, when, uh, and also see the widespread use of, of of fake products. Uh, so when, when faced with that question, genders uh, answers that the, these are two more, the two more important, two most important things uh, when it comes to the decision making, uh, whether to purchase a fake good or not, is to is their morals the first thing and the income. But when those two clash, the income wins. Uh, which is maybe not good for uh, not good. Uh, 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 
uh, information from brands at this point of time, but if you look, but we also know from this study that three in five gens, uh, gensers say they don't feel that they can afford the lifestyle they want, and that's why they buy products cheaper and the products which are fake. So if they earn more in the future, probably they will switch to originals. Also, uh, there is an interesting factor of this study is when you look at the social acceptance of the um, of uh, of purchasing fake products and the frequency of making purchases. So the uh, um, horizontal axis shows uh, the percent of answers when uh, the respondents say said the uh, uh, it is socially acceptable to buy fake goods, whereas Vertical axis say about tells us about uh, frequency of purchase. So we see that in countries like Japan, uh, where there is uh, very low acceptance, there is also low frequency. Whereas in countries such as Argentina, there is high frequency and high acceptance for purchasing uh, purchasing fake goods. And uh, uh, the the final uh, the final insight from the study is that although Gensers purchase goods which are fake right now for a variety of reasons. They also aspire to purchase fewer fakes in the future. And I combine that personally with the question about the pricing and uh, how they uh, uh, and their standards. So if they go further in their lives, probably they will think about this uh, twice before, before purchasing fake goods. So this is the first study, and the, the other one, the other one was uh, is a newer study from 2020, uh, 20, 21. It's about it's about brand restrictions, and in this study we looked at a cohort of uh, genders and uh, millennials, and uh, this was uh, also conducted in ten markets uh, during the start twenty minute survey uh, in November and October in October and November 2020, and it was done at the group of 5,000 people. And so we wanted to know how people look at the brand restrictions imposed by the, uh, which are obviously restrictions imposed by the governments, but also we wanted to know how people relate to uh, uh, the basic concepts and, uh, and the basic issues regarding, regarding brands. So whether they trust brands, uh, whether they are loyal to the brands or whether they are loyal to the brands in particular areas, a range of products, and what is most important for them when deciding what to purchase. So as regards the first question, so I think overall people do trust brands and uh, surprisingly enough, they trust brands more than governments, which may be not very fair to the, to the government because uh, it's probably much easier to run a brand than to run a government in any given country in the world. Uh, but uh, it just shows that, that the trust in brands is, is pretty high globally. As regards, mm, as regards product loyalty, uh, loyalty, it differs between products categories. So for example, we have tobacco products and baby food, which are uh, where customers are most loyal uh, for varying reasons, probably. If for tobacco products, it probably is addiction, and for baby food, it's probably is food safety and uh, healthcare. Uh, while people are not that uh, loyal to food and alcoholic, alcoholic brands. And what drives people mm, choices when making purchase? Obviously, it's price, that's the most important element. But also, and very importantly, other uh, uh, places are filled with, uh, with information. So it's information about health implication, nutritional information, list of ingredients, information about manufacturers. So information is very important for customers when deciding to buy the products. And this brings us to the... Uh, uh, Okay, I will do it right now. Okay, so um, knowing that we ask customers questions, what is, uh, uh, if they want to live healthy life and if they want to make healthy, healthy choices about the products, uh, who should decide what is healthy, whether it should be them or should be government or should be brands. Uh, so it's, it is directly uh, related to the restrictions. And uh, uh, half of them answered that it's uh, their choice to 
decide what to buy or whether uh, and choose how they live. And 50% strongly agreed with these questions that it is uh, with the statement that this is their choice, not the choice of the government. And uh, also, they uh, we asked what is the what would help people to uh, to decide what is healthy or not, and the overwhelming majority said that it is education, which would be more effective, and it, education in different forms. So it will be uh, uh, more education in schools, which is long term goal definitely. Uh, uh, more in nutritional information products packaging, which could be achieved uh, achieved uh, uh, much more easily e easily than uh, than education at schools. Uh, but the last thing they mentioned was this uh, applying packaging restrictions ac across products that are not good for their health. And so to summarize, uh, uh, the second survey shows us that uh, what consumer want, consumers want is choice, information, education. So choice that they can decide uh, what to do and what to purchase, information that they want to have more information what, about the implication of health when it comes to, uh, to food. And also education, so they want to be more aware of what is uh, 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 what are the implica implications of their choices, but brand restrictions as such are not at the top of the list. So thank you very much. This was the survey. And um, yeah. Are there any questions in the room? Are there My understanding. Yeah, Jorge Ancio has his hand raised. It's nice to see you even on a camera, Jorge. So oh, that's me. <laughs> Hello. Can I? Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. So it's good to be here. I don't, I hope that this doesn't mess up with the other microphone. Um, yeah, thank you very much for, for the presentation. Uh, perhaps uh, two questions. The, the first one is whether you have any insights from the study or comparing to other studies of difference with, and differences with other generations. So for instance, with generation Y or generation X, mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the, the first point because it's interesting to see what generation set uh, is thinking, but uh, if you cannot compare, it's uh, sometimes a bit uh, difficult. And the second question is on the second study. Um, I'm not sure what products are meant because uh, of course uh, there might be products where there's a gray area between um, choice by people and information education etc mm -hmm. and then there are other products and i'm thinking about tobacco for instance where uh, the public health considerations are very important mm -hmm. and of course i'm coming from government so maybe mm -hmm. i have a slightly different perspective also on that. So if you could uh, perhaps elaborate. Okay, sure. Uh, so as regards your first question, unfortunately we have only insights on, on Generation Z and, uh, and millennials. Uh, although it would be very interesting to compare, compare uh, those two, those two co cohorts, but that, that was not done during this study. As regard to your second question, well, I mentioned briefly products that were uh, taken into account. Obviously, there is a big difference uh, in all aspects between uh, treating tobacco products and child's products. So uh, really, these are, they are not in the same basket. But uh, what we wanted to achieve here is to check whether the idea of brand restrictions we started with tobacco products and then they are uh, the governments i think they're moving this approach to other products for example products with a high quantity of sugar whether this is the only goal like the the, the only way to achieve it and uh, probably the food products will be the next one the body care products will be the next one and uh, we just i i wouldn't draw like I would draw the uh, demarcation line between tobacco and other things we were, and other products we were talking about, 
and be very, very cautious with comparing those, those products. Yeah, I, I wanted to chime in. Uh, Pavel's correct. I think what the fear is, is that there's a cascading effect between something like a product that perhaps emits smoke that other people inhale and that we know and have lots of medical evidence that directly cause very serious disease. And then it kind of trickles down, trickles down, trickles down to the point where even choice, any choice, can be eliminated through the removal of the brand. Like the brand itself is the symbol of trust. Knowing where something comes from, whether it's for a, a habit that people don't, don't like in public, like smoking, or whether it's for picking up you know, a piece of candy or perhaps a cold cream. Um, we mentioned cosmetics possibly down the line that without knowing the source, no matter what's in the product, it's important to know the source. To say that um, removing source indicators somehow promotes public health or a different kind of choice, these, these studies don't bear that out. And that's, that's where we're headed with all of this in terms of trying to figure out the importance of, of brand dress and indicators on, on any product whether they're health related or related in some other way. And I would argue even in the, in the case of tobacco, uh, people want to know what they're smoking and where it's coming from. And there's different qualities and grades of product. Whether you agree that product is a good or bad product should be, I believe, irrelevant. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Um, and when it comes you know, to internet policy and respecting intellectual property rights and how do we uh, monitor and enforce online, activity, online activities in a way where consumers are assured of the products they're purchasing. I mean, that's the connection to me from my point of view with this particular study and in internet policy and, and the goals that we're trying to achieve at IGF. And I will say that has led me to some questions and, and it's questions that um, INTA will be thinking about in, in, in a much broader sense. But for those in the room, you know, if you, if you have opinions on this, you know, one of our, our results that I think is super interesting is that we found that 68% of Gen Zers trust brands more than their governments. So if that's the case, how can brands work more effectively to ensure that internet policy development is meeting the concerns of Gen Z? That's one question. The other question that also comes to mind is, is you know, Gen Zers believe that brands should be accessible and moral. And what does accessibility mean in this context? Is it all about price? Is it something else? And again, how would that affect policy decisions by the brand and perhaps even by governments in the online space? So if any in the room have you know, thoughts about this or, or wish to contribute to, to further dialogue on this question, we'd be very open to hearing your thoughts. And um, Jorge, I think hearing from the governments is very important. Is that an old hand, Jorge, or a new hand? That's a new hand. Yes. <laughs> I try to, to comply with the rules and uh, um, have my hand on the, on the virtual uh, Zoom room so that we have uh, equality for, for everyone in the room. Um, yeah, uh, I think, of course, there's, there's lots of uh, discussion and uh, material for, for discussing on, on this. And there could be many, many aspects from education over to how we relate to food products, uh, how we teach our children to, to know what, what is the production chain, the distribution chain, what are they eating. So that's, that's all uh, very, very important. But uh, there, there are other other aspects uh, on this that uh, that we could uh, keep on discussing, and uh, and yeah, so I don't know. Perhaps uh, it's it's worthwhile having uh, sometime a, 
a longer session on on this uh, material because it's uh, it's really very very rich thank you thank you jorge we have one more minute if anybody else has a question in the room i see a hand raised in the back sir you're welcome to ask your question please let us know who you are or ma'am i can't see i see i apologize for that <laughs> I didn't see who was in the back. I hope that's what that works. Um, my name is Anna Borkowska and I work in um, National Research Institute, NASC. And uh, I have a question about the research you um, uh, uh, presented to us. And uh, uh, the research was about um, uh, loyalty and trust to brands. And I wonder if you asked uh, uh, Gen Z about uh, factors that influence um, their trust and and loyalty to, to brands like I don't know adverts and celebrities things like that. If I, I don't know if you are asked about that in in your research, but it would be interesting. Actually, we did. Uh, it was not uh, included in the presentation, but it is. Uh, there is one big part of the study which is available online. And the interesting fact is that, uh, that uh, as uh, uh, Laurie said, uh, people trust brands. And if you, uh, there was a, a, a presentation of two products with a mascot or with a, a logo and without logo, and people tend to trust more the uh, products which display clearly display brands so they know where they come from so there is a big uh, and it is uh, there are varying uh, examples in the study about this but uh, the main uh, uh, the main outcome is that they trust branded products more than non-branded products the study the full study can be found on into.org um, our main website I apologize, I don't have the direct link, um, but it looks like we're we're down to our our last few minutes. Um, Ms. Radomska, if you would like, um, feel free to, to put your email in the chat or or email me directly, and I'll put the direct link into the study. That was just a lack of um, preparation on my part, and I apologize. I'd be happy to send the direct link where you can see all of the data. And I want to thank everybody for attending this session. And Jorge, I, I think we will follow up with your suggestion that perhaps we build on this topic and propose it for next year. And perhaps if there's any new information that comes to light, I think it would be interesting to have participants from other sectors. Um, the lightning session, I think, is a great start, but it's a start to your point. And, and these issues, when it comes to internet policy, I think are critical. Oh, thank you, Charles. Charles Shaban has put in the direct link and I see we're out of time. So I just want to say thank you and have a wonderful rest of the meeting. Thank you, Lori. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.